let us move on to the processor uh, processor. Processor is actually as I indicated is the brain of SOC. It controls the all uh, all the partitions are controlled by this processor ok and how does the processor work ok. What is the reason why we need to have a processor? Let us first look into that one. Primarily if you need to perform any operation today basically you have to have like ok when I need to do a task basically we have this like step 1 ok if I need to prepare a uh, coffee or something then I need to have like ok what is the step 1 ok I need to put this switch on the stove put the kettle then fill it with water add the tea powder all this come into picture all these steps right when we translate it can be translated to a flow chart having said that one the flow chart will be translated to a code and code gets executed on the processor means whatever the operation we are talking like I need to perform will be coded in the code and that will be handled by the processor ok and uh, that is where the processor becomes like the key important thing and it will be assigned the task which has to be ok. How does the code gets onto the processor there are various ways one basically wherein it automatically usually every processor uh, has a uh, a boot ROM we call it actually it comes up with its own code where an initial start happens and after that the configuration based on the application the scenarios they keep changing uh, with that one the main the processor will start with its own boot ROM code ok. The first uh, types of the processor one is basically based on their application what they are targeted basically the first category happens to be the compute processor ok. Compute processor are primarily targeted to perform a particular task which does not cater for any of the uh, specific application specific ok and uh, then and but if they do a multiple task because controlling all the other other components on the system other processors usually it is not indicated or not definitive saying that I need to have one processor on this thing all the types of processor which I listed here can all be there on a one single chip also based on the requirement ok and usually what happens is instead of handling a bigger problem and having all the processor and all the features combined in one single thing we are going to come we are going to partition them based on the features and that is where the development of the SOCs also will be faster ok. It is not required that ok everything has to be done in one single by one single processor multiple processors will be there and everyone have their own specific dedicated functionality and one main processor which is a compute intensive will take care of all the operation and then will uh, will assign the required task to the respective processor. The next category comes is the graphics processor if we look at it. In the graphics processor if you see today with the gaming gaming being more prominent the graphic processor is altogether a very prominent thing which is being uh, there is lot of compute intensive operations happening in the graphics processor. Like if you look at the compute processor the operations can happen in a sequential manner, but when it comes to a graphic processor like if you see right when you want to process the images then automatically all the operations have to happen in parallel and the way the compute the like normally we have an ALU and we have a branch unit, but all the data operations everything has to be has to happen parallelly and that is where the complexity of graphics processor is altogether a different one. Then the next one comes is a type of the processor comes is the security processor. Security processor are primarily targeted for the security applications. If you look at it what does it mean security applications today basically whenever we send a whenever we do a banking operation or swipe our card anywhere basically we have the the, uh, the compute uh, password received and all that then all this processing right there will be a security processor dedicated to authenticate and uh, basically uh, authenticate encrypt the data which is received and ensure that there is no uh, uh, no malfunctioning of the secu uh, of the data which is being exchanged ok. With that one the security processor has its own hardware accelerators and special instructions to support these features 
okay and the next one as it's a most common thing like as part of our engineering curriculum we have the digital signal processing and primarily the fft dft all the audio processing will all come into picture all this digital signal processing where we have the codecs the data which is received will be targeted and we are going to perform the required digital related uh, digital signal processing related algorithms and the last one is the power management processor here the having said that one right today we are targeting for a low power devices why then in that context we need there is a usually all the socs or majority of the big socs are going to have a power management thing power management processor primarily will look after the what are the various devices or various uh, components which are active which are inactive then accordingly it is going to scale down the power or scale down the voltage and uh, reduce the and uh, reduce the power consumption and increase the battery life this is where the all the power management also comes into picture